By the end of this video, you're going to be familiar with kernels and filtering in OpenCV for Python. I'm going to go through a few different things here. First is the filter 2D function, and then from there we can build into more complicated blurs, sharpening, and finally, a very cool way to do edge detection. If you're not familiar with the series I'm doing here, I'm teaching you all about OpenCV for Python. This is video seven. I have the playlist linked in the description and also all the code from all the videos is available on my GitHub. You can find a link to that in the description. Let's make this a lot bigger so you can see. Close the terminal and then let's go Zen mode. That's control K and then followed by a Z after for me. Import CV2 and also import NumPy as NP. I'm in Visual Studio Code here and I've already installed NumPy and OpenCV. That's in video one of the series. And let's read our image that we've been using for the entire thing. The cat, our lovely cat Ella, image equals cv2.imread and then the file path. That's under assets cat.jpg. Now let's skip past all these and just make sure we're doing everything correctly. So we're going to show the image. cv2.imshow, let's call the window cat, followed by what we're showing. cv2.wait key zero, wait for me to press any key before continuing with the program. And then cv2.destroy all windows. Run that. And we have Ella. Perfect. Press any key to close. I'm going to close that. Let's hop into filter 2D. The idea with filters is we're going to take each pixel in our image and then let its neighbors influence its value a little bit. We're going to be doing this with a thing called kernels and a thing that's similar to convolutions. If you've done anything with convolutional neural networks, this concept will make a lot of sense to you. Technically, to, for the linear algebra people, we're not doing convolutions, but you can understand it the same way. What we're going to do is we're going to build a filter that will blur an image. Blur filter equals mp.array. So this is going to be an array of arrays, and we're going to do all ones. You could also do mp.ones, but I'm just going to write it all out so we can see it a little better. So this is a three by three array of ones. And then I'm gonna divide everything by five so all the values are at 0.2. Blur filter equals blur filter divided by five. And that divides every single value by five. This is just a three by three matrix and all the values are 0.2. And we wanna apply that to our image. If you remember, image is just a NumPy array with pixel values. So we want to have this as a sliding window that goes over every single pixel and say, hey, also take some values from the pixels around you. How are we going to do that? We're going to rewrite image cv2.filter2d. What are we filtering? Image. And then we're going to do this thing called ddepth equals negative one. That stands for destination depth. We don't want to change anything. So we're just gonna put a negative one. You could change your types, like change things from uh, eight bit floats to 16 bit floats or something to ints, but we don't need to mess with any of that. And then finally, we're gonna do a kernel. That's like our sliding window. And that will be a blur filter. I'll put this on a new line. So now, if we show image, we've messed with image, added the blur filter, it should be a little blurry. Run that, and yeah, it's a little blurry. Things look overexposed and kind of messed with, and that's exactly what we're going for. If I comment out this line and we rerun it, that is the effect. This was the original, and this is what applying a kernel to the entire image looks like. We're basically summing up values from all the neighboring pixels to make it, well, overexposed in this case. If instead 
we really lower the amount that we're summing by, I just change this to 25, the image is going to look a lot darker because all of a sudden, instead of taking values from pixels around you and multiplying them and adding them all together, we're going to limit the value of your own pixel and then all its neighbors and put them all together. But that's going to be way less than 25. So now it's darker. Say we want to have not an underexposed, not an overexposed image. We need to make this value the same as our width times height of our filter. That's going to be 9. So 3 by 3. So now I have my normal pixel here. And then everything is going to get added together and get a little blurry. See that? It's just a little blurry now, but the colors are not messed up. I'm going to comment this out again. Oops. Run that. It's a bit sharper. For perspective, I'm going to comment this out, run that, and it's a bit blurrier. Say, I'm just going to do one more thing here. We're going to call this no filter. Uh, and I'm going to rename image to blur image. If we want to do this same method, I'm going to copy all this. How can we make it so that it doesn't change the image at all? Let's change all the variables first. No filter, no filter, no filter, no filter. And this is just going to be old. We're going to keep it as image because we have it showing image at the bottom, but I'll change that later. To make it no filter, we can't let our central pixel be impacted by any of its neighboring pixels. So this needs to go 0, 0, 0. We don't want any influence. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So the only pixel that impacts our regular pixel is going to be the central one. I'm going to comment out this line for the time being. And so now if I run this, it's going to do put it through this filter and display image. No change. What if we take each individual pixel and we lower its value? How that's going to look? I'm going to divide it by 3. So every single pixel value is going to be 3 times lower. It's darker, obviously. Now let's make it twice as big run that it's way brighter so that's one way that we can use filters and the filter 2d method for OpenCV. no filter slash brightness make that all caps okay and this is going to be let's call this bright image just to keep image unchanged as we move on to the next one Blur. So we blurred above using the blur filter, but now we're going to use OpenCV's built in blur method. Image equals CV2 dot blur. What are we blurring? Image D depth. I believe that's a parameter here. Oh no, K size. There we go. K size equals, in this case, for this blur filter, our K size was 3 by 3. We're going to make our case size a bit bigger now. 11 by 11. Let's run that. Pretty blurry. Let's make it even bigger. 111 by 111. Super blurry. A note about case size. This has to be odd. Just that's how the arrays and math works out. Okay. Blur image. Now, I'll show you the Gaussian blur. Image equals CV2 dot Gaussian blur. There are a couple more parameters. Just like blur, we have image and then K size equals, let's do 1111 again. But then we have sigma X. I'm going to set that equal to 3. And then sigma Y. Set that equal to 30. So we can really see what's happening here. If you've seen a normal distribution or a bell curve, in this case, sigma is how far it's spread out. That's one way to think about it. 
the standard deviation of the values in the, in the bell curve. How Gaussian blur works is it shuffles things around according to an, a Gaussian distribution, a normal distribution. But then we can set the parameters like sigma x and y. In this case, y is how spread out it is over the y-axis, and x is over the x-axis. So if we run this, we can see that it's nice and blurry. I don't really have the eyes to tell the difference here, but maybe some of you do, and you can tell how it's stretched out more in the y-axis than the x-axis. All right, moving on, we're going to sharpen. Sharpening requires a little different tactic, but back it requires the filter 2D method. So I'm going to go back, copy this blur filter code, bring it down to sharpen, and let's quick change the variables. Sharpen filter. We don't need this line. I'm going to delete it with control D. Kernel equals sharpen filter, and this we're just going to title image for now. The idea behind sharpening is you need to make a bigger difference between your central pixel and all its neighboring pixels. How you're going to do that is you're going to make it negative in the filter values and then more positive for the central pixel value. Let's start by changing all the corners to zero. And now all the ones on the outside to negative one. Just a note that they could be negative two, you can make it negative five. So if you add up all the, the four negative ones, it's gonna be negative four. The central value has to be greater than negative four. Otherwise, everything's just gonna get canceled out. I'm gonna make it five. So let's filter, that sharpen filter, and we're gonna see the original image get a bit crisper. Oh, I think I'm still showing the wrong thing. I didn't change Gaussian blur to so now we're not overriding image with the Gaussian blur. We just have the original image that we're going to apply the sharpen filter to. Run that, and there you go. It looks crisper, obviously a little unnatural. I'm sure you've used the sharpen filter on Instagram or something like that. But uh, that's what the impact of separating pixels from each other looks like. I'm going to comment this out so we can see the original image again pretty normal looking, and then re-comment, re-uncomment it. And everything looks a bit sharper and crisper, kind of unnatural. That's how you sharpen an image. I'm going to retitle this to sharp image. Moving on to edge detection. We don't need color for edge detection. We're really just looking at changes in light and how we're going to do that and take advantage of that is convert everything to gray. If you've been following along with the tutorial series, I'm sure you've seen CVT color before. We're gonna convert it from the blue, green, red color scale to gray image, and then CV2 dot, all caps color, blue, green, red to gray. By the way, if you're finding this helpful, feel free to give it a like, a thumbs up, Leave a comment if you have any questions, and also you can subscribe so you can get more videos from me in the future. Okay, we also don't need gray image to be as crisp as possible, so we're going to blur it a bit. This helps us reduce noise when we're looking at edges. Gray image equals CV2 dot, we'll use the Gaussian blur. We can just scroll up, copy that code, bring it down. Okay, delete that. Let's make our kernel pretty small. We don't need to blur it that much, but we only need to reduce a little bit of noise and sigma x1, sigma y1. So now our image is a little blurry and also grayscale. What is next? We're just gonna apply the built-in Laplacian function that is in OpenCV. There's a form of blurring called Laplacian that we'll be showing you. There are other forms of blurring, but this one looks at multiple directions, and other forms only look at X lines or Y lines. Okay, how do we do that? Edges equals CV2 dot Laplacian. We're going to do that to the gray image. D depth equals negative one. Let's not change any pixels. 
And then rather than showing image here, I'm going to show edges. Let's run that. And very faintly, but we see the cat. You can see the whiskers really clearly here, the carpet in the background, the border of the cat, and the leg of the table. The carpet looks really cool, but I am I love the whiskers. And oh, the tail. You can see her tail. How this works is it looks for the changes in direction and colors when there's a big gap in colors between one side of an edge and another side of an edge. That'll trigger the Laplacian filter and be like, hey, let's return one here. We had definitely have an edge. There's a big boundary in color change from here to here. But in this case, because we're doing gray, it's more like a light change thing. And that's it. Now you're comfortable doing filters in OpenCV. There are way more filters and way more ways that you can apply the filter 2D method and changing the different kernel types and what they do. In the next video, I'm going to be showing you how to remove the background from videos using a very nice and simple mathematical method. That's going to be video 8 of the series. I have everything linked below, the playlist to the tutorial, as well as the GitHub with all the code. If you've been following along with me this much, thank you so much. I hope this is helping you a lot. Happy coding.